Welcome Naresh IT, this is Mahesh. So in my previous video, I explained how to inject the data from consumer to provider by using the path parameters and query parameters. So in this video, we'll see one more approach of injecting or sending the data from consumer to provider. So what is that another approach of sending the data from consumer to provider is nothing but in the form of matrix parameters. This is another approach of sending the data okay, from consumer to a provider. How we are going to send the data by using the matrix parameters is nothing but if you see our previous uh, URL, if you take uh, how you send the data by using the query parameters, if you see this URL, so here the parameter values are separated. The parameter value, this is what the URL we used in the last video for sending the query parameters, right? For sending the query parameters, this is what the URL we used. So here, only difference between this matrix and query parameters is nothing but we use a delimiter called ampersand we used here. The delimiter we used ampersand in case of query parameters, but here in case of matrix parameters, what is the delimiter we are going to use here is nothing but the first thing. So in place of question mark also, let us separate this by using colon, okay, colon is a delimiter as well as I mean semicolon is a delimiter and here between the parameter, parameters instead of ampersand we are going to, we are going to represent, we are going to represent with a character call semicolon we are going to represent the character we are going to represent. In case of matrix parameters for sending the data in place of ampersand symbol we are going to represent by using what? This semicolon we are going to use as a delimiter. So quickly we will see an example for this how you are going to send the data by using the matrix parameter. So concept wise mostly the concept wise all are same just only the URL how you are sending the data that URL is going to be different. Okay. And quickly we will see this after that we will see the next one the form parameters we will see. Okay. So what I am doing is nothing but let us create I am creating one more method I am creating say public return type of this method is nothing but string is a return type of this method. I am creating a method name called insert matrix is a method name I specified meaning we are going to receive the data in the form of matrix parameters. So same like how we will see uh, how, we, how we created in the previous methods to identify this particular method, web service method, we configured the path we configured and we had to configure the request type we had to configure, right? And what kind of data you are producing, you had to specify that one also you had to specify. Let us say I am configuring the path I am configuring by using at path annotation to identify this particular resource. What is the path you want to specify? Let us see, let us configure here. I am configuring the path I am configuring called matrix is a path we configured. So when the request is coming from this particular matrix, then invoke this particular resource or method. That's what we configured. Next, what kind of request it is? This also I'm, spe I'm specifying what kind of request it is. Nothing but it's a get request we configured to receive the data. It's a get kind of get request. And what kind of data the method is producing? You had to configure here by using an annotation call at produces annotation. By using it produces annotation, we had to configure what type of data the method is returning. So we are specifying that return type. I'm specifying media type dot media type dot. What kind of data the method is returning? Let's configure here. The method is returning the JSON type of data. We seen the first thing plain text. We see in our second example, we are returning the XML data. We are returning a simple XML format. We return in this example. I'm returning a simple JSON format I am written. So I know that uh, some of the people are not aware of this JSON syntax and all. What we will do is nothing but after this JAX RS injection, uh, before going to forward to the next web services concept, so you must be strong with the JSON knowledge. So what I will do is nothing but I will prepare the video on the JSON syntax, how you are going to parse the JSON data on the, how you are going to parse the JSON data by using the JSON parsers. After understanding that, we will forward to the next web series concepts, we will forward. But that video I will prepare on the JSON concepts after completion of this JAX RS injection, okay. Fine, I specified what kind of data the method is producing. It is a JSON type of data, data method is producing here and insert matrix is a method name we configured or resource name we configured. So we want to receive the data in the form of matrix parameters, we want to receive the data. So same here like in the previous example how we configured in the form of query parameters just for quick testing purpose 
I'm doing the copy paste. Let's copy all these parameters and simply paste here. But only difference is nothing but earlier we are receiving in the form of query <laughs> parameters. Now you want to receive in the data of matrix parameters. Let's configure the annotation of matrix parameter. So instead of query parameter, we represented with annotation called what? It, it matrix parameter is the annotation we configured. So the method what we created insert matrix is receiving the data in the form of matrix parameters. It is receiving the data it is receiving in the form of matrix parameters. So the same code whatever you written here inside this method, our previous method, I am copying the same code I am copying here. If these parameters are not equals to null. If any one of the parameter is not equals to null, we are printing the data we are printing on the console and we are returning the data we are returning in the form of XML. But for this method, we configured the return type, we configured for this method, we configured the return type as a JSON, we configured the return type. So we had to return the data in the form of JSON format, we had to return the data we had to return. So how you are going to return that JSON data is nothing but, let us see. I tell you right, we will discuss more about the JSON syntax in the coming videos, okay. So simply I am constructing one JSON object I am constructing here. We constructed a simple JSON object we constructed. In this JSON object, basically JSON will maintain the data in the form of key comma value pages. So for each and every value, we had to configure a key we had to configure as well as we had to configure value also we had to configure. So key, key is a string type of data, so we know that right. So for representing the string type of value, we had to put in the double quotes we had to put. Let us take for example sample, just a simple JSON syntax I am showing here. So if you want to represent this message, I want to represent called success is a message I want to, I want to send in the form of JSON. This is a symbol is called as a JSON object we call. Whatever the data you want to send, we had to configure the data, I told you right, just now I told you. Uh, JSON will represent the data in the form of key comma value pages. For each and every value we had to configure, key we had to configure. The key is a type of string type. Value it can be a string or it can be a integer, it can be a, f a decimal value or it can be a boolean type of value. So let us say for example, we want to represent the data like this, we want to send. What is the status, whether it is a success or fail. Uh, status is a key, status is a key. And for this status key, we want to send a value whether it is a success or fail. It is a simple JSON, uh, we created a simple JSON object we created, key is success and the value is uh, key is status, value is nothing but success. But we know that uh, in Java, this double quotation is a symbol of beginning of a string, correct or not? And this, this is nothing but the representation of it is a closing of a string. But when you are returning this data, when you are returning here, in our response, the key we had to configure inside these double quotes we had to configure this key we had to configure that is status. But if you specify the double quotes here, it means that it, we are it is considering here internally the closing of a string it is considering. But we had to get this status we had to place inside the double quotes we had to place. How you are going to represent is nothing but let us specify this escape sequence character so that it is going to it will not consider this one right. Here also when you are closing this one, here also we have to specify this, okay, so that it will not be considered this, it will not, it will not be considered as a closing of a string, it will not be considered, okay. Status is a key, we configured this status key, we configured inside the double quotes, we configured the status key, we configured, comma. Second thing we had to configure a value we had to configure, so even this value also we are sending in the form of string only we are sending a value, so let us place double quotes. It is also considering as a beginning of a string, let us do not consider like that, specify this escape sequence character, right. So what is the key you want to send? Success, okay. So we are returning, if all, our, if all these parameters are not equals to null, we are returning the status, we are returning in the form of success. The same JSON string will construct, for fail also will construct the same JSON string, the same JSON string we are constructing for failure message also. So here instead of status success, we will return the status as what? Fail is a status we are returning. So we created one resource we created, I mean we created one method we created which is receiving the data in the form of matrix parameters, it is receiving the data and the method is producing the data in the form of 
a JSON format, it is producing the data. We created a simple JSON object we constructed. The JSON object contains only one key called status, either it is a fail or success, right. So let us test this particular service and we will check whether service is working, if not working or not, we will check. So let me redeploy the project, second ticket, run as server. So app is deployed, we will make a request, we will make. So how we are going to send the matrix parameters? After this context path, the first of all, it is to, it's a web service request, to specify it is a web service request, represent slash rs. And we, create, we created a lot of classes we created in the project, which particular class you want to invoke. We configured the path we configured for this particular class, second ticket info. What is the path we configured? ST is the class we configured. So inside this particular second ticket info, so ST is a representation of this second ticket info class. That is what we configured here in the class declaration, ST we configured for this particular class. And this particular class contains a lot of methods or in the, in the RESTful service terminology, we call each and every method we call as a resource we call, right? And each and every method is uh, returning uh, some data, right? XML or JSON or text or it can be PDF or it can be anything. That is why we call as a resource we are terming that one. So each and every method you can consider as a resource also you can call. So how many resources we created is nothing but three things, receive ticket information is one thing, insert query is one thing and just now we created one more thing called insert matrix. To identify this particular method, we configured the path we configured as matrix is the path we configured. So let us see here, when you are making a request, when you are making a request, so ST is a identification of this particular second ticket info. And to identify that method, we configured the name called matrix is a name we configured, okay. So colon, how you are going to send the matrix parameters is, after the resource name, I mean the method name semicolon is a delimiter here. What is the key? First thing is nothing but type. What kind of ticket it is, is nothing but we configured, it is a flight ticket I configured, colon. The one more parameter the method is taking here, what is the parameter is nothing but what is that date. Let us say I am configuring tomorrow's date, I am configuring 03, 03, 2018, okay. So daily we are separating the parameters, we are separating by using colon. Next what is the time, let us take I specified 8 am is the time we configured, okay. Next what is the name of this particular flight, let us take for example I am specifying it is Air India. Air India is a flight name I specified. Next, we had to configure what is a location. So from where the flight is, let us take. I specified the flight is from Hyderabad. The last thing is nothing but the price. Price I configuring here as a let us take 5000 is a price I configured. So click on this enter, let us take. If everything is fine, if everything is fine, it is going to print the data, it is going to print on the console and you are going to get the message in the form of JSON format, we are going to return the data, we are going to return in the form of JSON, see. So we got the response, we got in the form of JSON format, we got the response as success. And the log also, the data is printed, whatever the data we sent, check whether this data is printed in the log or not, let us check. Yes, we got the data, we got it, it is a flight ticket, this is what the date. So this is another approach of sending the data from consumer to what provider in the form of matrix parameters, okay. So thank you. In the next video, I will explain how to send the data from consumer to provider in the form of form parameters. Thank you.